Hey everybody, thanks for watching Reality Survival. For a limited time only, if you head over to powertech.com and use the code Reality Survival, all caps, all one word, you can get 40% off their all of their products site wide, you know, excluding sale items. So head on over to powertech.com, check them out, and uh, you know, get a good discount. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, so we got some fish today. Hold on here. And uh, we're going to see the process of them loading them into the pond and kind of getting them acclimated kind of so that the fish don't go into shock because of the water, different water temperatures and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> you guys don't want to come over here, I can show you the fish. Then. So these are the grass part here. Okay. And basically cool. these are just gonna eat the vegetation in the pond yep. and keep it all nicely clean along with the cool. top, yeah. They grow pretty fast, huh? Uh yeah. Because they eat like their body weight a day. Really? So usually within like I don't know, five years they're gonna be like three foot long. Oh wow. In most cool. cases. So And they live quite a while too, right? I've heard I've heard people say they live twenty years, but I'd wow. say you I mean, you get a good five to seven out of them, and then after that, the metabolism almost like crashes and they get pretty lethargic. Um, so we recommend people replace them every like five-ish years. Sure. But, I mean, they they'll live out in your pond for 15 years pretty easily. Wow. So that's crazy. Uh, and what kind of fish are they? That's a grass carp. A grass carp. Yep. So you don't fish them out. No, you don't want to fish those. You don't, you want to try to leave those in there because they eat the they eat the the moss and stuff on the top, right? The tilapia do that. The, oh, the tilapia so do. The, the grass carp just eat like the you know the grasses and the weeds that are growing in your pond. Okay. Much. Cool. Um, so that's why it's good to have both because I mean if you just put the grass carp in there, they're not really going to do a whole lot for your algae problem. Right. You know, come end of July, August when it's 90 degrees outside and that's when you know the algae really starts blooming is when it heats up so. gotcha yeah i'm glad you guys were able to get out here before it uh, got too hot for us yeah friday's our last day of uh oh of is stocking. it of seven and then do you start again in the in the fall is yeah, that like around september we'll start again okay. um you know once it starts getting cooler and then we'll go to thanksgiving okay but basically that times a lot of our cold water species so like smallmouth perch walleye um, stuff like that. Gotcha. So, and we'll do some of that in the early spring too, but you know, early March. Um, but Very most cool. of that happens in the fall. So how many fish are you um, here, here's the list if you want to look at them. It's, they measure in pounds, so. But they'll procreate. Yeah. They were getting catfish? Yep. We got some, we got some tilapia, we got some channel cat, some hybrid bluegill, some grass carp, and some gold shiners. Wait, we got 15 channel catfish? Um, it's going to be 15 pounds. How many pounds? Rough, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, these are just your, your channel catfish here. Just a little channel cat? Okay. Yeah, at four to six inches. So All right. Look like little sharks. How many of those will we end up getting? How, what'd you say? How, how many will we get on those? Uh, you're getting 15 of them. Is that just 15 individual? Yeah. Or, oh, okay. So ba basically everything's just except for if you're getting adult fish, tilapia or bait fish, everything else is just by number. Oh, okay. And then uh, those but, are just by pound just because, you know, bait fish count those out would be Sure, it'd be <laughs> miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Be here all day. Yeah. Because there's like 300 shiners per pound. So oh wow! Okay. It would be uh, it would be a nightmare. <laughs> gotcha. Can I drain this here? No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What are we gonna do? Got the easy way to just get out the last few. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier than just chasing them. Right. right. How many gallons does each one of these tanks hold? I don't know. I think it's somewhat close to 50 gallons. 50? Okay. So this truck gets pretty heavy when it's really weighty. Oh, I bet, yeah. I think without fish, it weighs like 20,000 pounds. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Get stuck really easily. 
those were the channel cat. Catfish. Now how, how fast do they grow? Pretty quick. I, I would say, you know, within a, a year, year and a half, they're going to be around that 10 inch range. Okay. But I mean, it really depends on food availability, how big your pond is and stuff like My that. My neighbor so. said that he pulled, uh, one of his nephews pulled, uh, or grandkids pulled a catfish out of there that was so big that he, it wouldn't fit in a five gallon bucket. Wow. This was several years ago. No, I, I, mean, I believe know, it. I don't I mean, know. Catfish end up being like the dominant predators in a lot of ponds and yeah. they can almost like clear you out in some cases. Oh really? So, um, you know, if you ever see your bass looking like really skinny, almost like a, like a two by four. Yeah. It's probably your catfish is eating all the food out of the, out oh, of the no pond. Oh, no kidding. And, uh, so, so I thought, I didn't realize that catfish were predator fish. Do they yeah, they so eat other fish too? They're, they're kind of like general foragers almost. I mean, they'll eat shiners, they'll eat bluegill. Okay. I mean, they'll eat like, you know, baby bass. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, they'll eat just about anything. And they feed on the bottom stuff too, right? Yeah, they'll, they'll Keep feed the, the bottom. bottom and I would say their main food source is probably bluegill. Oh, really? Uh, but I mean, they'll, they'll kind of eat everything almost. So. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, because it helps. They, they're healthy for the pond to help keep the bottom cleaned up and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I would say it, it, it's healthy to have, you know, just catfish in the ecosystem just to, they're like a general. big predator, so they keep the bluegill in check pretty much. Right. Because those, or you're in hyper bluegill, so they don't, they don't really reproduce, but, you know, regular bluegill reproduce like crazy. Gotcha. And so without, you know, those predators in the pond, I mean, even if you have just bass in your pond which also eat bluegill right they can still kind of like take over in some cases so yeah catfish are good for that reason okay cool. tons of bluegill, though. oh yeah that's there's a there's a bunch of regular bluegill already oh, in yeah. there so yeah yeah that and little minnows so I guess. which ones are we gonna fish out well at the at eat? the end of the year we'll eat the tilapia so uh, he was just telling me that the tilapia when the water temperature gets to what'd you say about 55 about 55 uh, that's when they die, but once it gets like 65, 60, when it starts getting cold, uh, that's when they're going to push up in the shallows. And you'll probably see them in that cove right there. Right. Or that cove, like where it's the shallowest, because that's where the water's the warmest. And then you can just net them out, he said. Yeah, and just then, get and then... a cast net online, and basically it's just the net that has weights around the edges, and you just throw it out on them, and it just sinks right over top. And then it gets caught in the net and you pull them out. That's the best way. Yeah. Because they can be pretty finicky like carp about like what they eat. Like right. they, I mean, you can catch them like carp on like dough balls and stuff and like worms and corn, but just the net's the easiest way. Sure. So, and if you don't catch them, you I mean your catfish or your bass are going to eat them. You know, if yeah, you yeah. have any big ones left in there. Gotcha. So. So which ones are these? These are hybrid bluegill here. Hybrid bluegill, okay. And they're a hybrid between you know, a uh, green sunfish and a bluegill. Okay, So cool. And about 90% of them are males too, so you don't oh, really? really get reproduction out of them. I see. And if you do, it's either going to be a bluegill or it's going to be a green sunfish. Oh really? It's just one be, or the other? Yeah, they're going to be nesting like on bluegill beds and the genetics are just kind of weird with them. So. Huh, how about that? And what do, what do bluegill eat? Uh, they, they, I mean, little minnows, you know, insects, dragonfly larvae, tadpoles, like in their early stages. Mosquito of larva? <laughs> um, I don't know. Yes, they will, but no. that's not really going to be like their main, yeah. one of their main food sources. But gotcha. I mean, they'll hit little bugs off the surface and stuff like that in the evening. Okay. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> One out. Very far. Hey guys, if you were concerned about uh, an EMP damaging your electronics, 
then I'm going to recommend you take a look at the EMP Shield. Uh, right now, you can save $50 per unit by using the discount code Reality Survival at checkout. Uh, EMP Shield is tested by Keystone Labs and proven um, to be able to protect your electronics in your home, in your vehicle, and in your equipment like generators and solar panels and all those kinds of things. So go over to EMPShield.com, take a look at them, and use the discount code Reality Survival to save $50 per unit. Thanks. So what are we doing now? This is the acclimation yeah, process? And then we'll just come back up for the tilapia and the, and the bait fish. Okay. So those are the catfish cat and the hydrogen frugo? Yep, and then the grass carp are my, my right hand here. Okay. We have a snapping turtle problem in this pond we're trying, oh, really? trying to deal with. Do you um, <laughs> I recommend any way to get rid of them, especially. You I've know? never done it before, but I've heard like jugging them. Oh, like, really? Like, uh, you know, you take milk jugs and you tie a line to them. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when they're bobbing, you either have a big catfish on there or a turtle. Right, so right. You can get turtle traps too. I never really messed with them either, but yeah. um, I've heard from people they work pretty well. That's cool. So that bigger one is the catfish? These are the grass carp. Oh, the grass carp. Yeah. And then uh, your, your catfish, the catfish in have here. A little yeah, things. the little barbs on them. So the grass carp can just go right in. They don't really, have, you know, adult fish like these guys are don't really have. They're they not gonna. Really, they just don't really care about you know right. temperature changes in water. But right. the smaller the fish are, the more acclimation. Harder for them to regulate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got a bunch of bluegill right underneath the dock here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we feed them. We got the little can of feed here, and we they come up whenever they hear us quite a bit so basically just putting the water down in the the bucket down in the water like that just helps the temperature to adjust to the same yeah, but I'm just gonna slowly add your water to my water and until it's you know gotcha kind of similar and then I watch the behavior of the fish just kind of see what they're doing okay I can just slow it down or not um, but Huh. Interesting. Yeah. It's raining. Yep. <laughs> what is it you look for with the behavior? I mean, they'll start kind of acting erratic. Okay. Moving a lot faster. And with the bait fish, they'll start doing twirls and stuff like that. If um, it's too cold? If it's getting too hot too quick for too them. Too hot, too quick. Uh, gotcha. You know, those are kind of signs that they're kind of not liking it and kind of going into shock. So. Gotcha. But, um,. If they're calm, I mean, they'll just kind of sit in the bottom of the bucket and move around a little bit like they're doing now, so. Yeah. And I was never taught that. That's just something I observed from doing this you sure. know, a thousand times or so. so. Yep. How long have you been working with Jones Fish? Uh, about a year now. Yeah. So. That's cool. There they go. Are they usually fed pelletized food? Yeah, they are. Is that what they're? Um, so we throw some in for them, or no? No, they'll be fine. They're not going to eat for you know multiple hours just because oh, okay. they just went through a big ordeal. So yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just going to go to the deepest part they can, just kind of hang out there hang out. for fifteen or so minutes. And Roger. Get their and move off and That's cool. Yeah. What are you doing, girls? Where's Mama? You guys see the, the hen? Oh, they're over here. Yeah. Not really Mama, but 
they got separated and they're like, where's my, my girl? Yeah. So which ones are you pulling out now? Uh, golden shiners. Golden shiners. So these are just bait fish? Yep. Yeah. Is there any, any fish in there? No, oh, not yet. No. I'm just tearing out the water. Now. Gotcha. There are your shiners. Okay. The bait fish, yeah. Oh. Do they reproduce pretty quickly, or? Uh, they'll reproduce about four times a year. Okay. Um, I mean that that's not much compared to fathead minnows that reproduce. I mean every couple of weeks. Oh no kidding. It's every seven or fourteen days in the spring and summer. Wow. Um, but these guys are faster swimmers, a little bit bigger, and just kind of can evade predators easier. Oh, I see. So there's no need for them to spend that much time and energy, you know, on reproduction. So. Gotcha. How many of those did we get? Uh, you got one pound. One pound. So it's like 250, 300 okay. fish. Okay, cool. And this is the tilapia, the last one? I think so. Is that the last one's the tilapia? Yep, last one's the tilapia. And you said some of these have been being a little bit bigger? Yeah. We'll see. I don't, I don't know what this batch is looking like. Gotcha. But Recently they have been. We're getting five. Oh yeah, they're five a little pounds. bigger. Five pounds. a little bit like fish. Yeah, these ones are a little stingy. <laughs> but these are the good ones to eat. Kids. Some people like them, some people don't. Oh. It depends. You said these guys grow pretty quick too, right? Yeah, I mean, they'll double in size by the time you pull them out. So, yeah. Um, it's really starting to rain. Yeah, it's really starting to rain out here, isn't it? <laughs> this is nothing compared to this morning. I mean, it was, oh, man, I bet. It was poor. <laughs> Yeah. We'll stay under the tree so my camera don't get super wet. Okay guys, so it's starting to rain here, pretty bad. I don't want the camera to get too wet. <clears throat> um, but basically the idea of what we're doing here is we're trying to stock the pond with m multiple different kinds of fish that will eat, you know, algae and grass and junk at different layers. And then we also put in some bait fish and those kind of things, um, you know, to help with feeding the catfish and the bluegill and whatever. Um, and we're just trying to make the pond more healthy without having to add chemicals to it because that is one way that you can do it that you can that you can clear ponds up and stuff 
but I would prefer to go the natural way. The tilapia fish, as we mentioned, are tropical fish, so we'll have to eat those at the end of the season. Uh, we can pull them out with nets or try to catch them or whatever. Um, and yeah, and then we'll have to put in more next year if we want to do that. So it's a little bit of an ongoing cost that way if you're going to use tilapia, but I may be exploring some options on trying to keep some alive over the winter too, so we'll see. Anyways, Andrew, you want to take us out, bud? Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Right. See you guys. If you guys have been thinking about getting your ham radio license, then you should go over to hamradioprep.com. Uh, I've been checking this out myself and going through their courses. I'm going to be getting my license here pretty soon, and it is a great training resource to get you ready for the test. You can use the discount code Reality Survival 20 to save 20% off uh, at checkout. So check it out, hamradioprep.com, and use the discount code Reality Survival 20. Thanks, guys.